23 or 26 states. Uh, as a, 23, they have total control of 23 states now. And they are embracing conspiracy theories and moving forward with, with legislation that dismiss the idea of democracy and replace it with the idea of, of oligarchy, essentially, of single party rule, of rule by the rich. And in large part, this, I, and you combine that with, you know, six right-wing cranks on the Supreme Court, put there by, uh, in, in several cases, what I consider to be illegitimate presidents, and what you have is a, is a recipe for a disaster for the world's largest, most prominent, and wealthiest, and most powerful democracy. And that is a crisis of democracy. This crisis of democracy is really deep in this country right now. It has seized the Republican Party. It has seized the Republican base. Now, the good news is the Republican base seems to be shrinking. There was a study uh, j just published today out of uh, Maricopa County, out of, out of Arizona. But, uh, you know, looking at the actual votes that were reported and what they found was about 75,000 people who voted for Trump in 2016 voted in 2020, but they didn't vote for Trump. They either voted for Biden or they voted down ticket for a whole bunch of Republicans and they did not vote in the presidential race. In other words, 75,000 roughly people in Arizona, Republicans in Arizona just decided enough. We've heard about his raping women uh, we've seen him corrupting our government. He's giving away federal monuments to mining companies. He's stripping our public lands. He's trying to destroy Social Security and Medicare. He's trying to, he's, he's trying to gut Obamacare. He's, 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 he's trying to undo the regulations in banking to, you know, to prevent another 2008 Bush crash. He's, he's giving away our secrets to foreign countries that may be hostile to us. He is sucking up to foreign oligarchs. He tried to get in bed with foreign oligarchs in Ukraine to steal the election. And, and you know, again, after having gotten help from Russia in 2016 to steal that election, there were 75,000 Republicans in, in, in Arizona who said, no, nah, not going to vote for this guy again. And that's why he lost Arizona. It wasn't the Democratic surge. It was Republicans saying, don't like this guy. I guess that's good news and bad news. You know, the, the good news is we understand what happened. The bad news is next time around, the candidate probably won't be Trump. It'll probably be somebody a whole lot slicker and a whole lot smarter and a whole lot more dedicated to real fascism rather than just, you know, Trump being dedicated to a personality cult, essentially. But we're looking at, look at what happened in Texas. This is amazing. There, there's a, a new study out that, that uh, was just recently published. This, this was, um, it's been, it has not yet been peer-reviewed, but it's been pre, it's in pre-publication. It's done by uh, uh, health, public health experts at the University of Kentucky. And they, and they looked at Texas specifically because Back in November, before people were being vaccinated, the governor, Greg Abbott, opened all the public schools in Texas. And all of them were supposed to be open for the fall semester at near full capacity. And the estimate that they came up with, looking at what happened as a consequence of that, and they, they were using cell phone data as well to, to, to watch people move it around and watch the, the change in Texas when the public schools opened in how mobile people became. And their estimate is that roughly as a result of this one single order by this one single governor in this one single state, Greg Abbott, the, the Republican governor of Texas, 43,000 Texans got COVID-19 and 800 of them died as a result of his order to open the schools before it was safe to open the schools. 
I mean, the Republican Party is being run by stupid. But it's not just that they keep getting these kind of Kevin McCarthy dim bulb politicians. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know enough about Greg Abbott to know if he's as frankly stupid as Kevin McCarthy. Kevin McCarthy is actually, you know, just not that bright. I mean, I know people who know Kevin McCarthy. He's just not that bright. And that's fairly common in the Republican Party. You get people who, you know, you teach them a couple of good lines that they can parrot and, you know, they don't really have an interest in digging deep into policy and they really don't want to understand how governments work and things like that. Just, just say a few things that sound good and we'll get elected and we'll get power and, you know, when we leave office, we'll get a million dollar a year job at some corporation that supports Republicans. And yeah, it's pretty straightforward stuff. But it's destroying our country. And then you've got these guys who are being, who are literally making millions of dollars a year, these right-wing talk show hosts, who are being subsidized. I mean, you know, Politico, uh, Ken Vogel, the, the reporter, uh, outed, this was back in 2015, as I recall. Uh, Politico did a story about how, you know, Limbaugh was getting, I think it was $2 million a year from, from the Heritage Foundation. Sean Hannity was getting a million dollars a year from them that you know, these right-wing hosts were being subsidized by these giant right-wing foundations. Well, if somebody's crossing your palm with two million bucks a year, do you think it might have some influence on what you put on the air and what you have to say? There is, by the way, no such thing on the left. This program gets not one penny from anybody other, I mean, we, on the commercial side, we have advertisers. But, you know, I'm not sucking up to them. I, I, you know, we, we, in fact, there are some advertisers that we simply won't carry. So, you know, it's, it's pretty straightforward stuff, I think, that the Republican Party has become corrupted. American politics have, been corrupt, have become corrupted by big money. And that it was the Supreme Court that opened the door to that after Lewis Powell got put on the Supreme Court in 72, the, the court in 76 and 78, legalized political bribery with their Buckley and, and Bellotti decisions. And that brought us an ocean, a tsunami of money into the Republican Party that, that floated Ronald Reagan into the White House in 1980. And then in 2010, the Supreme Court doubled down on and expanded Buckley and Bellotti. And then in 2013, McCutcheon even expanded that. There used to be a limit on how many politicians an individual billionaire could own. They blew up that limit. So now you've got the entire, basically the entire Republican Party, including state at the state level. I mean, Republicans here in Oregon get money and getting support, financial support from right-wing groups, right-wing foundations, helping them get elected. And that corruption, and, and, and what's the message that they're delivering? Oh, you know, the people don't matter. Social Security is, that's socialism. Get rid of that. Get rid of Medicare. Get rid of food stamps, get rid of unemployment benefits, get rid of regulation of corporations that keeps the air clean and the water clean. You don't need that stuff. We need more profit in our corporations, don't you know? So that they can cycle some of that money back into the Republican Party. It has become this evil thing. My friends, we have to fight back. We have to speak the truth.